Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. I hope you are all doing very, very well today. I'm going to be doing a video today that I've done one of before and it got really good comments and some really good discussion. So I thought that I would try it again and maybe turn it into a series if you guys are interested in it. Um, it's the one where I did the five books from the backlist, things that came out a while ago but you may not have heard of and you may be interested in picking up now. They're usually all in paperback or available at your library. Um, so I thought I would try that again and uh, give you five titles to maybe go hunt and search out. If you guys like the topic could you let me know below and maybe I'll turn it into a monthly video um, and then if you've read any of the books as I always say discuss them below so people can know how great they are because I really am excited about getting these five books back out there for you so I'm gonna start with a bit of nonfiction and that is quiet by Susan Cain and it says the power of introverts in a world that cannot stop talking and this is a nonfiction book really about how introverts have affected the world and how they get along in a world where really extroverts are championed. And I just, you know, I was reading the inside again because it's been a few years since I've read it. And it says that at least one third of the people we know are introverts. And although they are often labeled quiet, it is the introverts that we owe many of our greatest contributions to society, from Van Gogh's sunflowers to the invention of the personal computer. And I thought that was really interesting. I think that sometimes extroverts really get a lot of the attention, but introverts play such an important role in the world we live in. Being an introvert, being a person who reads, I really found this book to be powerful and kind of eye-opening, kind of a book that champions the world and my friends, because as you can imagine, a lot of my friends are introverts. So that's Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking by Susan Cain. The next book I'm gonna talk about, actually you would say, Russell, it's a Pulitzer Prize winner. People have heard of it, but when I tell people about it, I don't feel that they've heard about it. And that's The Known World by Edward P. Jones. And this is a fantastic book about a topic. I love the back of it says it's a footnote in history that no one really talks about. Um, and it is a story of, what's his name? Henry Townsend, who is a black farmer in um, Antebellum South, who is free but owns land and owns slaves. And when he passes very soon at the beginning of the novel, it's really the story of his wife and whether or not she can hold on to the farm and the land that belongs to the family and manage the slaves that work for the family as she struggles with this idea of whether or not she even believes in the practice of what is going on on the farm. Um, it is very introspective. It is very thought-provoking. It is beautifully written about a topic that when I was reading it every time I turned a page, I was like, I had no idea. I've read a collection of short stories by Edward P. Jones as well as The, the Known World, and I find him to be a fantastic writer, someone that's probably not read enough. So if you haven't read The Known World, um, as you can see, my copy is really beat up. I've given it to 100 people to read. Um, I highly recommend it. It will open your mind. It will introduce you to a fantastic writer and really sort of get some thoughts going in your head about stuff you probably didn't know existed. Or if you did, it puts it into such a perspective that is just fantastic. So that's The Known World by Edward P. Jones. The next book I am going to talk to you about is Butcher's Crossing by John Williams. Now, John Williams may be one of my favorite writers ever. I've read everything he's written other than his very first book because he says don't read his very first book. He has since passed. Um, and his book, Stoner, probably, if you ask me what my favorite book of all time is, I would probably say that. But I'm not bringing that up because I really, I'm not sure if I should do a My Favorite Books of All Time video. And I really think that some of his other books really should be read. Um, Butcher's Crossing is the story of Emerson in the 1870s. Emerson is a gentleman who leaves Harvard to move to Kansas, Butcher's Crossing, Kansas. I couldn't remember what state it was in there. And while he's there, he becomes part of the buffalo hunting trade. And it's really the story of him going out on these expeditions to hunt buffalo. And it's about being stuck in the wilderness 
and the introspection, looking at your life when you have so much time on your hands because you're waiting for the migration of the buffalo to come through to kind of spawn what you're going to do and how you're going to earn your income. It is a little brutal at times regarding the the killing of the buffalo. So don't go in with go in with a little bit of a strong stomach because it can be a little tough. But I will tell you John Williams may be one of the most underread most beautiful, fantastic writers. Um, Stoner, Butcher's Crossing, and Augustus, which is his third novel, which won the National Book Award, which I'm sure I will talk about on another one of these videos if you guys want me to do it, are fantastic. I I really do think that he may be one of my favorite writers um, of all time. And it's in this beautiful New York um, review of book classics condition. Uh, edition, condition, edition, and if you haven't read it, please, please pick it up. It is, it is really good. I would um, say if you love Cormac McCarthy, it's very much a Cormac McCarthy. It kind of has a Faulkner-esque sort of style to it. So if you like those guys, um, I would, I wouldn't say it's. Hmm, I, th I think probably Cormac McCarthy is my closest connection. Um, but maybe a little bit more even readable than that. But it is it is fantastic, and uh, I really, really, really think that you should read Butcher's Crossing by John Williams. Um, the next book I'm going to talk to you about, I kind of, when I think about it, I kind of think about Lauren over at Lauren of the Books. Do you know how you watch a booktube channel and someone just makes you utterly happy? That's Lauren of Lauren in the Books for me. She just cheers me up every time she says, hello, and <laughs> another booktube video from Lauren. And I think that she would love this book, and I think you all would love this graphic novel. It's um, Nimona, Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. And um, she and a couple of other women write the graphic uh, novel series, The Lumberjanes. So if you've heard about The Lumberjanes, she's part of that project. But this is her solo book. And this was also nominated, it was shortlisted for the National Book Award or National Circle Award for children's fiction. And this is the story of Nimona. She's right there in the middle. She's a young girl who wants to be a supervillain. So she seeks out this man right here to become his apprentice so she can become a supervillain. What's pretty fantastic is this is about a world and a society that has a clear distinction between good and evil. But, at, but as the graphic novel goes on, you sort of start to realize that maybe the good side isn't so good and the evil side isn't so evil. And these two gentlemen who play sort of the counterpoints and you know, the dark haired evil man and the blonde haired perfect good man, there's a history between them that I don't want to ruin for you, but it just, it will crack you up. And, but it will also kind of put the heart in the whole situation. And Nimona wants to be so good, but as in being so good, makes a lot of mistakes because she's young. The book is beautifully drawn. Let me see if I can get you some of the pictures. It's beautifully drawn. Nimona is a shape sifter. That's what makes her so special. And, um, it's a great story about what really makes a person good, what really makes a person bad, the decisions we make that affect us as a person, and I highly recommend it. It's got sort of a LGBTQ plus aspect to it, um, but it also just speaks to young girls who are empowered to be whatever they want, should it be a supervillain. Um, I love this book. That's Nimona by Noelle Stevenson, and I think you'll really like it. Last but not least, I'm going to tell you about a book that's, again, I'm going back to books that are in my top 10 favorites of all time, but it's a book that utterly broke my heart when I read it, and that is Poppy and Dingham by Ben Rice. Now, I don't know if Ben Rice has ever written another novel, um, because this is so perfect, I've never gone out of my way to find anything else by him. Um, I found this book um, because of a New York Times, no, maybe a Time Magazine article saying the 10 best books you probably never heard of. And I was like, oh, and I couldn't find it. It was actually only available electronically. And if you guys know me, I do not read electronically very often. I'm trying to more now. Um, but at this time, it was unheard of. But I really wanted to read the book, so I bought it. And I actually found this copy at a library book sale in Livermore with the Finkbeiners. 
if you're watching, Gwen, hello. Um, the Finkbeiners will, and I, they're a family that I know from work, will go and have lunch or something, and they took me to their local library sale. And this book was there, and it was 99 cents. And it's one of my favorite books that I didn't own. I had to buy it. Enough of that. Russell, what is it about? Poppy and Dingham are actually the imaginary friends of a young girl who is the secondary main character to our book. This is the story of her brother. And at the start of the book, the family has decided that the little girl needs to get over having imaginary friends. So they convince her to allow her imaginary friends to go to work with her father. This is set sort of in the outback of Australia. Her father is a miner um, in a rural part of Australia. And she allows her friends to go with her father and when he comes home at the end of the day, he's like, oh, here are your friends. And she goes, no, they're not with you. Where are Poppy and Dingham? And she is convinced that he has lost her friends, her best friends. And what happens is she gets very ill. She starts to get very ill because of what her brother believes is the loss of her best friends, these imaginary um, two people, Bobby, Poppy and Dingham. So he goes on a search through the town to try to find Poppy and Dingham, and he tries to convince, and he doesn't have to try so much. The whole town is aware of these two. It's a small town, and he wants them to all help, and so he goes to the mines, and he goes searching because he wants to make his sister better, and he wants to bring them home so she will get well. Um, so, sappy story. Maybe I was finishing this book. I was in the bathtub. I was reading it. And the book ended, and I just started sobbing. And people ran in, and they were like, what's wrong? And I won't say much more than that, but I loved this book. It broke my heart, and I think you all absolutely should read it. And that's Poppy and Dingham by Ben Rice. So I hope you guys like this topic, and I hope that this is a reoccurring episode or video that I can do. If you do like it, please let me know. If you've read any of these books, I'd love to talk to you about them. If you pick any of them up, um, please let me know. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Thank you so much. Please subscribe. If you're returning, thank you so much. I Every day that I see I have a new subscriber, I'm thankful for all of the other subscribers that I have that have made my channel what it is. All of the conversations, all the tweets, all the Instagram followers. Um, this is a passion project and you guys make it so worthwhile. So thank you so much. Have a great day and I'll see you in a couple days with a new video. New video. Sorry. Bye. Talk to you later.